You've lived a great life and done well for yourself. But what mark will you leave on the world? How will you inspire future generations? Stan Miller and Katie Beth Hand have helped thousands of people answer exactly those questions. If you've ever wondered, what will be my legacy? You're in the right place. Welcome to the Your Life, Your Legacy podcast. Now, here are your hosts, Stan and Katie Beth. Hello and welcome to Your Life, Your Legacy. I'm your guest host, Matrona Jessica Ward, and today we have with us a very special guest, Electra Demos with the Assistance League of Temecula Valley. Electra has been involved with the Assistance League for a number of years, and today we're going to talk about her work in the community and how it affects her and others. Electra, thank you for being here with us today. Thank you for inviting me. Our pleasure. I wanted to know if you can start by just telling us a bit about the Assistance League, what it is, and how you got involved with their work. Well, Assistance League is a nonprofit, all-volunteer organization. Uh, We are one of about uh, 21 chapters throughout the United States. Our chapter was incorporated in 1988, 89, and it's been in operation since then. We serve the Southwest Riverside County, the communities of Menifee, Wildemar, Lake Elsinore, Temecula, and Murrieta. So that's our service area. We have, in order to service these areas, we have developed philanthropic programs depending on the need of our community. The only program that all assistance leagues in the nation have is Operation School Bill. This is a program where we have agreements with the school districts in our area. So we have agreements with the Murrieta Valley School District, Temecula Valley School District, Menifee Union School District, Lake Elsinore, Unified School District, and also with Roma Land. So how that works with that particular program is that the schools send out notifications at the beginning of the year of all their information, plus information about how to contact us if the family qualifies income-wise for our program. They have to be a very low-income family. So once they fill out the application online, we make appointments with them at Coles in uh, Menifee or Murrieta or the Lake Elsinore Target. And they come in from August to October during their appointments. Uh, We double check their verification of their income. And if they qualify, then they can go in and they shop with their children for $125 tax-free clothing uh, for school. And it has to be appropriate for school. So that's our main focus and the main focus of all the assistance leagues in the nation is Operation School Bill. Then at that point, each chapter then can look at its own community and determine what are the needs in their community and establish programs that fit the needs of their community. What we have found beneath, under the umbrella of Operation School Bell, we have put what we call chapters for children. This means that there are six other area chapters around Camp Pendleton. We all get together one weekend of the summer, Saturday and Sunday, and we clothe the children of the low-income military families, the enlisted families. That is with the help, of course, of the personnel on Camp Pendleton. They choose the families and direct them to us. This means that each chapter is responsible for a certain item. We are responsible for all boys' genes. So they come to us during this period of time. And then the other chapters have either hygiene or girls' shirts, girls' pants, boys' shirts, whatever. So it's like a shopping mall, so to speak. And the last, I guess, since COVID, it's been, we've had to do drive-through type thing at Camp Pendleton. And so we've been giving out debit cards for the kids to go shopping on their own. But we're hoping this year will be do it more a personal interaction and the kids can actually go around and shop and pick out things that they like. So we're hoping for that. But that's under uh, our Camp Pendleton uh, program in our area. So we 
partner with the other six chapters. The other one, it was requested of us from preschool teachers, the Head Start teachers. A lot of kids come to the program and they might have a little mess or whatever accident that happens. And so they have to sit around like that until their parent shows up. And sometimes that can be all day. So they requested clean clothes, uh, hygiene uh, items, that type of thing for the kids. And anytime we have, give them a duffel bag full of that. And anytime they feel they need a refill, they just let us know and we refill it. So those two programs are under the umbrella of Operation School Bell. The other program that we found uh, that is really needed in our community, we have what's called the Operation Bear Hug. This is one of my favorites. These are little bears that are very soft and cuddly. And we've introduced them into the ERs of all the hospitals in the area. And so when a child comes in traumatized or an accident or whatever, they're given a bear. And the bear has a little t-shirt that says, I should, I have one, I wish I had brought it closer to me, that says Assistance League on it. We get a lot of feedback from that from parents. They send us pictures via Facebook and the kids cuddling them. And they can even go through an MRI with the kids because they don't have any moving parts or anything like that. But it was fun. When we first introduced them, funny story, a child had come in. Well, we had gone to the hospitals and explained the program. We left a sample of the bear for them to discuss it and see if they want to join the program. And in the meantime, a child came in who was traumatized and wouldn't let the doctor near him and was just not cooperating. And so the nurse remembered the bear. And so she went and grabbed the bear, gave it to the child, and he calmed down immediately. And the doctor was able to examine her. Of course, the doctor said, get more bears. We need these <laughs> for the ER. And so that program has been very, very successful in all of the programs that we have. Actually, if I can find it here quickly, I can give you a number. We've had over 5,085 teddy bears were given out our last fiscal year. And I might go back and mention in Operation School Bill this last year, we closed 1,806 children with new brand new cl- clothes. So that's one of them. Then we do work with the, we call Operation Foster Homeless Youth. We work with the agencies, the foster agencies in the area. We obviously can't work face-to-face with the kids uh, due to privacy issues. But we do work with the agencies, so they tell us what they need. A lot of times kids leave a home in the middle of the night with maybe nothing or a bag, trash bag full of their stuff or whatever. So we fill in with do the same type of thing as Operation School Bell clothing. We give them duffel bags to have their stuff in and that type of thing, books. So we help them transition from their situation to their foster family. So they'd let us know what they need in that respect. And if they need anything else, we always, they'll just tell us what they need. And we can, if we can supply it, we do. At Christmas time, the agencies give us names and ages of the children and what they wish for. And we call it a giving tree. So we put little ornaments with the kids' names and what they wish for and ages on a tree, and mostly our uh, members take the ornaments, and it can be up to $50 that we can spend on the child. Uh, Last year, we kind of um, expanded it a little bit, and we were able to provide hygiene uh, equipment, Senior, uh, we do car seats, we do all this kind of stuff with them. But the kids are really happy with their Christmas presents during the during Christmas. So that's really gratifying to us as members that we were able to do that for the kids ourselves. I bet. Uh, and then uh, another program that we have is uh, nonprofit op- partnerships. The National Assistant League says, don't try to duplicate services. In other words, our community has pantries, They have uh, homeless shelters, et cetera, that type of thing. So there's really no need for us to start that all over again. 
So what we do is we work with them. We have agreements with them. And if they need any particular thing, sometimes they'll like Hope Pantry has requested hygiene items or household cleaning items, food. So we we either have drives where we collect this for them and give it to them, or we have actually gone to like Food for Less and shopped with the people from the pantry what they need. And the last time we did that, we spent about $1,000 buying whatever they needed for their pantry and for their clients. So we work with them in that way. And so we don't duplicate the service. We can't give them money, but we can give them product. So that's why we go shopping. We give them the actual product and not just write a check for them, that type of thing. And we also have a very lovely room in our uh, chapter house. Our chapter house used to be a bowling alley. And so it's quite large and it does have a lovely meeting room because that used to be the lounge of the bowling alley with a kitchen. And we let nonprofits uh, use that room for meetings at no cost to them. So we use this as a gift in kind for our giving purposes so that they can meet without having an expense for that. So that's been very nice. And we like to help. And I think mostly in this community, all the nonprofits interact and help each other, which is really nice. So if we can't supply something, we can go to another nonprofit that can do that and say, look, we have this person, they need such and such, and they'll help them, whereas we couldn't, or vice versa, they'll direct them to us. So that's been a really nice feature. We also have operation scholarships where we give the kids, the high school kids, we gave $45,000 worth of scholarships this year to the seniors in the area. Uh, One of my favorite things that this program does is teacher grants. Many of our members, including myself, were teachers in our past life. And we know that teachers subsidize the classroom many, many times. Mm -hmm. So we started a program, which I know no one else has, is teacher grants. So a teacher can write an application and tell us what enrichment program they would like to add into their classroom and how much it is. And it must meet the California standards. And they have to state that and tell us which standards they're meeting. So then we read them like we do a scholarship application and determine who will get the award. It's up to $400. Sometimes teachers only need $100 or $50 or whatever for their program, but up to, they can request up to $400. And what's really, really nice about this program is that if a teacher, let's say, requests equipment or something like that that's not a consumable, it's going to be there. They're going to buy it, and they can use this year after year after year for this program. So imagine how many students are impacted, you know, with these grants. Teachers love them. We got over 100 applications last turnaround. And it's just fun reading them and seeing the creative ideas and how teachers are excited about their teaching, their curriculum, and want to give the students a little extra something to learn for learning. So that's another of our programs. We have a wonderful program called Assistings. This is seventh through 12th grade students. They can join, of course, they get their volunteer hours for school, but they get so much more from this program because they have their own board. They have their own chairman, their own membership chairman, et cetera. So that's a very important leadership opportunity for them. And they also determine what their philanthropic programs are going to be. So they can have independent ones or they can sometimes they have connected with the chapter. In other, for instance, the assistings have taken over Roma Land Operation School Bill. So they can't actually deal with the kids on a shopping basis. But what they do is they get shopping sheets of the child's name, preferences, size, et cetera. And they go actually go shopping for them and then take the 
flows back to the district and the district distributes it to the students. So they like to at least, you know, they want to do something with the kids, but are not allowed to really interact, you know, with the kids. So this is a, a good solution to that problem. But they have, they work with uh, single moms. They've done quite a few different philanthropy programs that they actually administer themselves. Of course, they do have a, you know, an adult supervisor, <laughs> a coordinator, but they run their meetings and they do a lot of philanthropic. They do a lot of helping with us. Like if foster youth needs bags or anything packed with stuff, they do that. So they help us in that respect too. But it's just a great program. The kids are just so neat. I was assisting Zvias on it one time for several years. And if you have any doubts about youth, you should just go see the assistings. They are fabulous. The wow. other bonus to this program is they get work experience. The first in the beginning of the year, which our year starts now in June to May, they cover the thrift shop counter that registers the first two Saturdays. And when their membership builds up again, they cover the three Saturdays. So they actually open the registers, count the money, wait on the customers, give change, whatever you do in retail. And then at the end, they do merchandising. They put things out on the floor. They can sort the clothes. And then they close the registers, count the money at the end, make the report, et cetera. So that's a great, you know, for a 15-year-old or 16-year-old, that's a job that they can put down on their resume. And they have the experience of doing that. And our customers love coming in and interacting with the young people. So that's a bonus for us too. So that's kind of what we do that we have chairman for each philanthropic program. They have committed. Also the thrift shop needs people. We have to have people who sort the clothes, people who, and each department also has a department chairman. So they control what's happening with their department. They have committees on their people on their committee that help. You can't make money if you don't get the product on the floor. So this is their job is to sort things through and get product on the merchandise on the floor. Now, in saying this, you can kind of see how many branches we have where we need our members to support. And that's the beauty of, I think, Assistance League. I came to Temecula 25 years ago when I retired. My husband retired. Our children were more up in this area. So we decided to come up. I didn't know anyone. I happened to meet some Assistance League ladies. And they invited me to their meetings, et cetera. And the rest is history. I'm still there from 1999. <laughs> uh, That's great. I was going to ask you how you got started. Yeah, it was really interesting. Temecula used to have an art houses or some, I forgot what they call them. The art league had them where they had designers, decorators, decorate rooms in the house. And then you had docents that stood and then they charged for people to walk through and see these wonderfully decorated homes. And I happened to be in uh, one area and the women were over there. Of course, you start talking. <laughs> and so that's how I got there. But my point to this is you can see everywhere that you can fit in. I feel that Assistance League gives a volunteer the opportunity to serve where their passion lies. If you're passionate, a lot of people are very passionate about foster youth or uh, scholarships or Operation School Bell. I love going to the shopping days when the kids come to the Coles or to Target and work with them going through verifying their income, et cetera, and just seeing the kids come out of the store just so happy because a lot of them have never been shopping. A lot of them have never had brand new clothes. I mean, when I moved here, I thought this area was so affluent. No, there are a lot of people in need in this area. And uh, that kind of brought it to me. And there's just so many places you can just, some people just love the thrift shop. They love merchandising. They love to work with the customers. And so that's where they fit in. They love it. The other thing that's so nice is that we all come with our background our expertise, what we've done in our past lives. Many of our members came with financial backgrounds. So we have a great, we are very 
well suited with financial items. Our finance uh, director can go toe to toe with a CPA. So th those things are really wonderful that we bring with us and that now that we're retired or whatever, we can just go to the areas that we really like. For me, I love going out in the community. I love uh, public relations. I am now the marketing communications chairman. I go to com community events, to chamber events. It's a lot of networking. I love to network and let people know about Assistance League. As a charity, you don't want to be the best kept secret. No, you need right. to be out there. So I love doing that. I love doing things on the computer. I do. I manage our website. Uh, I also do our newsletter, our monthly newsletter. And I also take care of all our databases, our chapter database and our national database. Uh, I do any advertising type flyers, whatever we need. So I'm really, that's my passion. And I know a lot of people don't like going out and talking to people they don't know. But I don't mind that. I, I like doing that. I like meeting new people. So there's my passion. Someone else's passion there in the thrift shop talking to the customers or merchandising. So it, it's just a wonderful organization where you can find your place and you can uh, serve the community. You can make a difference in someone's life that you've never met. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the main crux of it for me. I, I know I'm making a difference. Even though I may not see it, many times, though, when I'm out in the community, a lot of people will come up and say, oh, I was a recipient of Operation School Bell. It made such a big difference in my life. You helped me at a point of time in my life where I really needed help. And that's so gratifying to hear people talk and say that. So I just feel that uh, our programs are well suited to our community. I think we're filling a need where no one else is filling it. And uh, I know no one else is doing the things that we are doing. And I just feel that this organization filled a need for me, too, because I didn't know anybody here. And suddenly now I have over 100 friends. So it's wonderful. And then and, and I've met so many people in the community just going out and uh, talking and networking with people. So I just feel it's a really wonderful program. It's self-sustained. We have our thrift shop that I discussed. We also have a committee who, again, bring their expertise with them and they write grants for us. We, we get a lot of support from the in, uh, from grants and also from community members who just like to donate. Uh, we have a tremendous clientele for the thrift shop. Uh, I send out every week, I send out a, an email through Constant Contact. It's a program where you can send out mass emails without it being spam. Uh, and they, they have to sign up for it. I have to have their permission. So we've got almost 3,000 uh, people who have walked through that thrift shop and signed up or online have signed up for this email. So I let them know what's on sale. We have 50% off sales in uh, chosen departments each week. And they just love it. And uh, they donate. We have a tremendous amount of people donating all the time. So in shopping at our store, you really have to shop it frequently because there's new merchandise and items coming through every day. So mm -hmm. it's, and we have a lot of uh, dedicated daily shoppers and they know that they know what we've had on the floor and they're looking too. So you can get a lot of good deals. They're on the hunt. Boutique department that has name brand women's clothes at fraction of a fraction of the price that you see on at the stores now. So if you're a good shopper, you can save a lot of money and, I love it when people will come up to me when I'm networking at events. We have one particular gal who is a very avid shopper and she loves coming up to me and showing me her outfit because this is what I bought at your store. <laughs> and it's just gratifying. I, I just feel that I know I'm, I don't see exactly what I'm doing, but I know that I'm touching lives and we touched over 35,000 lives through our programs last year. Wow. So I know we're making a difference. And to me, that's important, really important. And I'm doing it with a team that mm -hmm. is like-minded. And we're all there. If there's a problem, we brainstorm. How can how can we solve this? How can we get do what we need to do? Yeah. So I just I'm just very 
very thrilled that they found me and I feel I've had a purpose. I mean, when you retire, you can you can travel and you can clean out your drawers so many times, you can vacuum so much. And after a while, you really need something to make you get up and feel like you're doing something. And the other way is you're volunteering. So if I don't feel like it today or we have plans, I do what I need to do that day and not worry about it. So that's why I've stayed so many years. I'm 20, 25 years now. I've, I'm a wow. member. Yeah. And I just love it. I've also been president. I, I was president for two years and wow. I've held a lot of positions on the board. How do you feel like your work, your 25 years there, which is incredible, by the way, how do you feel like that's contributed to your personal legacy and what people are going to remember about you? I think it's touched my family. My kids have taken my example and they like to donate their time and they realize how important it is. And I think that's important to pass that on to your children, that it's good to serve and to help others who are in need. We're so blessed. And and our family has always said this, that we are so blessed that we need to do for others. And this is one way for me to be doing that. And I hope my going out in the community and telling people about all this is helping too for them to realize that we need to give back. Yeah, giving back is so important. And you found an organization that is good for everybody and yes. different ways to give back. Yeah, what I think, do you think it's so many ways that you can fit in and, and do what you'd like to do. What can people in the community who this is their first time hearing about Assistance League, what can they do to get involved? Well, they can go to our website or they can go to, we, we do Facebook, Instagram. I'm sure people will see us, maybe follow us on Facebook, Instagram. They can go to the store. They can ask questions. If they go to our store and ask for the day manager, we always have a day manager who's in charge of the day, including with the other people working that day and just talk to them and find out or You can also go email us through our website and ask for more information. And our membership chair will get in contact with them. If they don't particularly want to be a full member, we also love to have what we call community volunteers. So let's say that they have an hour or two that they want to do something or contact or be in contact and interact with other people. They can come in and be trained and uh, sort the clothes. It's very important. Uh, Sorting is so important because we get these bags and boxes of items. Well, that all has to be sorted through and put into the right departments so that they can be put on the on the floor to sell. And that's very important. So they can just be a community volunteer and that doesn't require any commitment. Once you're trained, you can come in during business hours whenever you feel like it and an hour, half hour, whatever you have and talk to the gals back there and the man, we have men. So it's not just women and just have some fun while you're doing something meaningful. Hmm. So that's always, that's always nice to do. And our business hours are, we used to be open all week before COVID. So how you're always COVID did this and COVID, <laughs> COVID hit us pretty hard. So now we open from one to four. I'm sorry, 10 to 4 on Wednesdays and Fridays and 1 to 4 Thursday and Saturdays. So those I are our like business that. hours. Yeah, we'll those are our those Facebook and those Instagram and those opening yeah. hours in the show notes for everybody. Yeah. Looking ahead, what do you see as your goals for Assistance League and your role in it going forward? What would you like to accomplish? Um, I think Assistance League, we're always looking for how, what different ways we can support the community. In fact, right now, we are looking at our our strategic goals. We have adopted them to 2025. So now that's coming up uh, where we need to review, look at our programs. Is there something else out there that we need to be doing or how can we change the program to more fit uh, what is needed there? So we're looking to the future all the time and, and what are the needs of our community? And we, we work on that to see that as we go forward, 
because there's so many changes in society and, and uh, people's needs that come up as time goes on. So we look at that and we look at our and re-examine our programs to make sure that uh, what we're doing fits what is needed. And if we need some change, then we will change whatever it is that we need. That makes sense. As we come to a conclusion, what message would you like to leave our listeners about what they've heard today and what they can do about it? I hope that I've inspired listeners to especially people who are nearing retirement or are have newly retired or are retired to not just sit and watch television. Come on out here and get involved. I think getting involved and there have been studies made that if you're involved and you're out there volunteering, that you have better health, you have better attitude, you're a happier person. So I hope I've inspired people to come and learn a little bit more about us, see how they might fit in to the organization and what programs they might like to pique their interest that they might want to find out more about. And we always welcome new members. Our meetings are the first Tuesday of every month at the facility. So our, our facility is at 28720 Via Montezuma, Temecula. That's our thrift shop. And we meet in our lovely meeting room and just come and or just drop by and just ask for the someone to talk, just say, I need the uh, day manager. I'd like to talk about assistance league. I want to learn more about you and see if I might be interested. So just take action, just take action and step out there and uh, maybe come and join us. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Electra, for sharing the incredible work that you've been able to do through Assistance League. And to our listeners, I hope you've been inspired and that this is going to help you to engage in your own work that will help leave the legacy behind. This has been Electra Demos, and I'm your guest host, Matrona Jessica Ward, for your life, your legacy. Thank you. And we look forward to seeing you on the next one. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Your Life, Your Legacy podcast with Stan Miller and Katie Beth Hand. If you enjoyed the show, please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. To find out more about Stan and Katie Beth, go to PinnacleLegacyLaw.com. You can also find links in the show notes.